Blessings and salutations to you for tuning in to this, the fourth episode of Into the Meeting. I am Noah Roush, your host. Today, instead of doing 15 seconds, we're going to do a full minute. We're going to dive into the darkness in one of these tracks. It's called Martyr the Crown. This comes in the middle of the album, as see most of my tracks when I actually don't know their location. <laughs> but um this one is dark this one's moody it's seedy it's it's everything you never wanted but needed here we go What is going on in this? What is going on sonically? What is happening? The beautiful thing about this track is that it starts off and it sounds like you're in some sort of underground crypt where zombies are chasing after you. You have that low, which I'll play right now. You know what I'm saying? I, I found that noise and immediately I'm like, okay, this is going to be a darker song. Yeah, You can't sing about, you know, a Christian wedding. <laughs> that ends well. Um, with that kind of, with that kind of underpinning to it. Okay. So that's kind of what drove me the, the music drove me to the conception of the lyrics in this, in this song. Um, I then kind of unpack a little more with, with, you know, in a former life, I surrendered to your love, married it. What am I talking about? What are the things that we adhere to? What are the relationships or ideas that sweep us away? What idols? Do we worship in today's society people have lots of different idols if you're a video game addict you know getting to level 80 and having the best loot on hardcore mode even if it means not ever playing with your family or friends again just so the uh, bragging rights of being in first place this is i'm not i'm not complaining about anyone right now this is just me vocalizing uh you know something <laughs> that's that's something that people do and it's a self-image thing it's it's uh, i am nothing until i am better than you that's one idol pride uh, you know, another another idol is a relationship. It's it's um, you know, I want that infinitely beautiful lover who wakes up every day, makes me coffee. Um, you know, we get it on like like dynamite, and I'm on. I'm like constantly overwhelmed by how fantastic our relationship is. You know, I want to ride that high train of a perfect relationship all the way to the grave. Um, yeah, that's never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. Um, you know, that's how you get AIDS and, and die. Um, so, you know, because because it, it, one person can't satisfy all these needs. One person can't be that perfect person. There is no such thing as perfection. A a everyone knows it, but we just lie to ourselves um, through through the things we pursue. Um, so these idols kind of creep in. And, and, and what I'm talking about with the lyrics there in the beginning is basically an idol. Uh, you know, in a former life, I'd surrendered to your love and married it. Um, now, satellites are embers above and they carry it. So the image of, you know, perfect love as a young boy, as a young man, destroyed me. I mean, I remember being in high school, just like pining over these girls, just pining, sitting behind them, writing poetry that I'd never show them. You know, it, it was pathetic. It was it was cute in a weird way, I suppose. But it didn't, you know, it didn't go anywhere. These are the things, <laughs> these are the things that, that we develop with, that we carry forward, these idols, these ideas, this hopeless romantic, you know, um, the idea like in, in, in the elevator, in those romantic movies of you complete me and they like sign it to each other and it's, oh, it's precious. Well, you know, no, it's not true. It's not true because ultimately we all die. So, you know, you, you don't really complete me. I guess death completes me, but until I get to death, you're a good partner. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a realistic perception that we need to shed. Anyways, this is kind of a revelation about that, this whole track. I then kind of get into the, the back half of this. Um, 
when I'm talking about the crown, we all want to be in, in, in the driver's seat of our lives. We want to be in control. Most people, you know, unless if you want to relinquish control, which is control in, in your own way, because then you don't have to worry about anything. So you're controlling your own circumstances by not having to deal with them. Regardless, martyring the crown is a very interesting way of basically saying that we eventually have to martyr. We have to kill the idea in our mind that puts us in first place, that puts us in the king's seat. We have to kill those idols. If you don't kill the idols, the idols end up killing you. So, you know what? Like, let's actually, at this point, listen to another minute of this track, right? We've heard the zombie introduction. We've, we know it's dark. We know it's seedy. We then heard the piano break. It's going to get lighter. It's going to get beautiful. But will it? But will it? Here we go. Next minute. Where are you? Where am I? What is to be? series of lyrics is actually built off of a memory of someone I was in love with trying to work it out, but it was never going to work out because the way we ruled our kingdoms was completely different. The way we ruled a household was completely different. The way we thought love should be was completely different. Our moral framework, our moral structure, the ideas that we grew up with, completely different. And so what you end up realizing in these toxic relationships is that like, okay, I'm going to get martyred here. Someone, I, either someone has to take off the crown and be like, you're king. Um, or you have to just like allow that part of you, that, that broken relationship, that broken idea, that concept, that idol, whatever it is you're trying to build to die. You have to, you have to allow yourself to be martyred. You have to break up. You have to move away. You have to do what you have to do. That's kind of what this whole thing is about. On the other hand, this is also about one's own psychological nature. And what I mean by that is that, again, we're battling these ideas. We're battling this desire to control. I don't want to be, you don't want to be out of control. Um, the whole COVID-19 thing is freaking us out. I don't know, you know, my job at this point, welcome to the laid off world, Noah. I was a sales rep. I was doing well. I liked what I was doing. Unfortunately, I was doing a lot of face-to-face -face negotiation. And now here I am. We constantly have to evolve and our ideas have to constantly shift and change. And that sucks. That really sucks. It's not fun. It's not fun to not know where you're going. It's also not fun to not be in charge. It's not fun to be martyred by reality. But by framing it as being martyred, the concept is richer and deeper than I'm just simply. Yeah, okay. See, here's a work email. It's like, do I tell him? Do, do I tell you I'm laid off? No. I had a great train of thought. That's it. By saying that I've been martyred, you're taking a powerful stance over the fact that you've been destroyed, right? <laughs> the king who was martyred died for a cause that superseded himself. The Christian who was martyred died for a cause that was superseded from himself. The Muslim, same thing. Whatever it is, if you're martyred for something, it means that your ideas are higher than you. Whereas an idolatry is as something that I want for myself, is something that I desire to have and hold forever. That perfect lover who satisfies me from, from day's end. That is not something that supersedes me. It's something that satisfies me. It's, it's inherently selfish. Where martyring is inherently giving. It's inherently, okay, I'm laying my life down here. So to frame it as martyr the crown is a very interesting title. Because I'm not saying, hey, this king is out of line. Execute the crown. I'm not saying, hey, you know, it, it's time for us to shed our old ways. Kill yourself. Now, I'm not saying that. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm saying 
martyr the crown. I'm saying take out the part of you that is ruling your demise, that is in charge of the things that you don't want to be anymore, and martyr it. Put it to death. Take your old self and put it to death. That is the beauty of Martyr the Crown. Um, the lyrics kind of flow. They come, they come from that darkness. They come from human experience. They come from my own battle with my own idols, my own broken ideas, my own memories of, of, of relationships going awry, my own expectations shattering. But then at the end, and in the heart of it with that title, the adherence to the fact that we have to have something that we can lay our lives down for. We can martyr the crown. Because if we are in control, and let me go on. I know I'm over 10 minutes, and usually people only listen for about three, but that's fine. If you do not lay down your life in some way, eventually it will be taken from you because death is inevitable. As COVID-19 sweeps across the nation, we know that now. People are panicking. They're freaking out. The beauty of being a martyr, the beauty of having something that supersedes your idols, your expectations, your desires, your wishes, is that you can die. And you can die at peace, knowing that, hey, I have something else. I have some other idea, some other concept outside of my own desires, outside of my own wishes, outside of my own understanding that I can place my faith in, that I can place my love in, that I can place my hope in. And I'm not anchored to this, this realm of desire. I'm not anchored to this broken crown you know like Mumford and Sons the broken crown you hear what that song did to him his desire to be king that you know it messes you up it messes you up to be the ruler of your world at the end of this track and I won't play it because then you'll hear the whole song basically you know I say I don't I don't want to be king I never wanted to be king nope don't want it don't want it when you control life circumstances you build a prison around yourself and it's called your castle I, I know a great amount of people who chase after those idols. I want this to satisfy me. I want this to satisfy me. I want this to satisfy me. And I look and it's like, all you're doing is eliminating the light, eliminating the creativity, eliminating the things that could make you unique and just becoming another sheep walking through the, the vast gate of temptation. You know what I mean? Like at some point desire has to be tamed I, I don't like idolatry has to be executed. The things that you know, at least has to, you have to go to war against it. The things that subvert your desire for goodness must be put to death. Martyr the crown. Hopefully this was somewhat entertaining. Thanks for tuning into episode four. Uh, be well. Uh, thanks for listening. April 7th, all this goodness comes out. Stay tuned. Peace. Peace.